is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Father who raised up Christ from the dead, lead us as we study today. Whatever we learn from thy word, to God shall be all the praise. In Christ's matchless name, amen. Now, yesterday when I left the radio, we were discussing Matthew chapter 17, and believe it or not, this is referred to as a trance or a vision or a type of a parable by some precious people. And I do not say that word precious with sarcasm. I say it with sincerity. Peter tells us that there are some who are willingly ignorant. Now, I believe that's true. I believe there are some people who don't want to be helped. They don't want to know any better. Their mind is made up, and they don't intend to change whatsoever comes or goes. But there are other people who need instruction. Now, the people who want instruction and who need instruction and will receive instruction, you are the people to whom I'm delivering this series of sermons to help you know what will happen when you die, when the breath leaves the body, and when the heart stops pumping blood, and the doctor pronounces you dead, and they call the undertaker. Where are you going to be? What are you going to be doing? Now, I started the message on yesterday by referring you to uh, 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 Genesis 5.24. Enoch walked with God and was not because God took him. Now, God took Enoch to heaven. That's where God lives. That's God's home. That's God's dwelling place, heaven. So God took Enoch to heaven. Now, he didn't take his body, but he took his spirit, the inner man. Now then, Elijah was caught up in a chariot of fire, 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 11. That's 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11. God took, uh, uh, took Elijah up in a whirlwind, rather. The chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared in the sky, and Elijah went to heaven in a whirlwind. Now then, some 750 years after Elijah went to heaven, Elijah was on the Mount of Transfiguration talking to Jesus. Now, you say, Brother Green, can you prove that this is an actual experience, that Jesus was bodily on the Mount, Peter, James, and John were bodily on the mount, and Elijah came bodily on the mount. Can it be proven? Yes. The Bible says after six days, it names the days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, three men who were alive at that time, and they went up on a high mountain, and he, Jesus, was transfigured. His face shined like the sun, his raiment white as light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, or Elijah. And they were talking with him. Then answered Peter and said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us build here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. And while he had spake, a bright cloud overshadowed them. They were not in a cloud, but a bright cloud came down and overshadowed the scene when Peter put Jesus on the level with Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, the chief of prophets. Now then, this was an actual account. Just as surely as Luke chapter 1 records an actual conversation between Gabriel and Mary. So there's no getting around it. We might as well face it and face it squarely that Peter saw Elijah... Peter saw Moses, and both of them had been dead physically for hundreds of years. But their spirit, the inner man, their soul was not dead, but it went to be with the Lord. Now then, I want you to turn with me, please, to 
uh, to uh, the verse I'll give you in just a moment. First Thessalonians, I was looking for it. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. And I want to read you this uh, wonderful account of what's going to happen when the Lord Jesus comes. And I want you to follow me closely. And I want to point out some things that are very, very interesting and will help us to know whether the dead are unconscious or conscious, whether the soul is sleeping or whether the soul is awake. And here's where we read. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep. I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep. Now is that clear? God doesn't want us to be ignorant. If we're ignorant, we're willingly ignorant if we have the Bible. That you sorrow not as others who have no hope. Now then, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, you believe that? Even so also, listen now, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Jesus. It says him in the Bible and the him is a personal pronoun that refers to Jesus. Now, I want you to get that verse of Scripture. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, the Bible says, Even so them, T-H-E-M, also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. Now, how is God going to bring them with Jesus when Jesus comes, if they're not with Jesus to begin with, God would have to first send to the grave and get them, translate them to heaven, and then send them back with Jesus. But that's not true. That's not what the Bible says. Now then, let me say this. Christians do not die. The body dies. Dust thou art to dust thou shalt return. That's the flesh. Man was a dust man, and God breathed into his nostrils, and the bloodstream started... The life is in the blood, and man became a living soul. Now listen. Those who die in the Lord go to sleep in Jesus. But wait a minute. Did you sleep last night? Well, you weren't dead, were you? You weren't dead. And you weren't unconscious. You can't wake up an unconscious person, but you can wake up a resting person. If I'm lying down resting... All in the world you need to do is to touch me and I'm awake. And beloved, to be asleep doesn't mean to be dead. To be asleep means to rest. Revelation 14, 13, happy are the dead, happy, H-A-P-P-Y, blessed, blessed, happy are the dead who die in the Lord. From this day forward, they do rest. They rest. Sure, they're asleep. They are asleep in Jesus. Now, if Jesus is dead, they're dead. If Jesus is unconscious, they're unconscious. If Jesus is asleep and unconscious, then they are asleep and unconscious and dead in a grave. But if Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and if the dead in the Lord are asleep in Jesus, then, beloved, they are where Jesus is, and they are in the Father's paradise. They are resting with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Jesus comes back, in the air, and when Jesus comes back to this earth, he's going to bring with him the spirits, the soul, the inner man, the real man, the spiritual man. He's going to bring that back, and the body will be glorified, and the spirits of the redeemed will be united with resurrected, glorified bodies, and the living Christians will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 51, 2 and 3, and so on. Now then, so the Bible says that if we, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, I believe that, even so them would sleep in Jesus. Sleep in Jesus, not in the grave. They're not asleep in the grave, beloved. Listen, I'm not smart. I'm not trying to be smart. I'm not trying to prove a religion. I'm not trying to prove a doctrine. God have mercy. Help us to read the Bible. Help us to believe the Bible. Help us to stand by the Bible, live by the Bible, and die by the Bible, and forget these uh, all of these traditions and ideas and all that stuff. Listen, 
If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Jesus. How's God going to bring them with Jesus? If they are not with Jesus, and if they're with Jesus, where is Jesus? Is he asleep in a grave? If he is, then the righteous are asleep in the grave with him. But if he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father, the righteous are resting in the paradise of God. Now look at verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, that is, precede, them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So that's where he's coming from, from heaven. Now he's going to bring the sleeping in Jesus with him. See? Now do you see it, or do you want to see it? Are you trying to see it? Do you care to see it? Or do you have your mind made up? Now, this business of souls going to the grave is foreign to the Word of God. Oh, I know the Bible says the dead know not anything. That's the dead body. The body dies. The soul don't die. The soul of man is immortal. Indeed it is. You say, preacher, preacher green, prove that. Prove that. God breathed into man's nostrils and man became a living soul. If God's breath is eternal, then brothers' souls are eternal. God breathed into man's nostrils and when God breathed the breath of God into man's nostrils, who was dust, then the dust man became a living soul. Now, if God's breath dies, and if God's life dies, then you'll die as a soul. That is, you'll cease to exist, and you'll be unconscious. But that'll never happen. Fifty billion years from now, fifty trillion years from now, and whatever comes after that, You'll be resting, rejoicing, singing, shouting in paradise, or you'll be roasting, screaming, begging for water in a devil's hell. You say, I don't believe that, Oliver Green. You will believe it. Fifty billion years from now, you'll believe it, because you will have been there long enough then to convince you firsthand. I hate to have to say that on the radio, but God knows people who won't believe the Bible, then God will convince them in eternity. And if you refuse to follow the Word of God, then God will just show you by an illustrated eternal pit that you'll drop into when you die. Now listen. The Lord, listen now, I'm reading, and the Bible says, We which are alive shall not prevent or hinder those that are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He's coming from heaven. The asleep in Jesus, God's going to bring with him from heaven. The voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, the bodies, and the bodies will be, uh, will be glorified. This corruptible must put on incorruption. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 2. Now then, so, listen now. The Lord himself should ascend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then, then, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Say, Mother, did you have a boy killed in service? Was he a Christian boy? All right, now doesn't this bring you a lot of comfort? His body is over yonder somewhere in a grave on foreign soil. Now, your boy is over there asleep, unconscious. Your poor boy, killed in battle, is over there. His body has already gone back to the dust. His spirit and soul is unconscious, somewhere over there in a hole, maybe in the bottom of the ocean. The sea will give up the dead, the, body, the Bible says, and that's talking about bodies. Now then, doesn't it give you a lot of comfort, mother, doesn't it just make you rejoice and just say hallelujah to know that your boy is unconscious, asleep, dead, in a grave on foreign soil? Doesn't that really encourage you, huh? You know better. You know better. Listen, here's what encourages you. It makes you praise God when you got that telegram, your son is dead, killed in action. He was a good boy, a saved boy. And he left home, and he hugged your neck, and he kissed you, and he said, Mother, if I never see you again, I'll meet you where? In the grave? No, in heaven. I'll meet you in heaven. Now, here's the thing that comforts you, Mother. To know that the minute 
that bullet or that shrapnel found the vital spot of your boy's body, and his life's blood slowly ebbed away, and his life left the body, and that lifeless body fell on a battlefield and went limp and still. The lungs stopped breathing, the heart stopped beating. Your baby boy or your oldest boy, as the case might have been, died. Now here's the thing that makes you happy. The minute that he died, the same band of angels, not the same angel, but the same group of angels that carried Lazarus to Abraham's bosom, was right there on the battlefield, and they took the life, the soul, the spirit, the living part, not the dust, but the living part, the breath of God. They took the soul of your precious boy and carried that life of his to the paradise of God, and he's been resting with Jesus ever since he died on the battlefield. Now that comforts you, doesn't it, Mother? Say I've got a little boy that's dead, but praise God, he's not asleep in a grave. He's resting with Jesus. My daddy's dead, and I left the tears at the grave the day I buried him. I think about my dad, and God knows I miss him, and I'm mighty lonesome sometimes when I think about him, but I don't go to the grave and bawl and squall and dig in the dirt and beat the grave and say, my poor daddy's down in there. My poor daddy's not down in there. My rich daddy is in the paradise of God. Nobody's poor in paradise. Don't say my poor mother, my poor mother. If she died a Christian, she's not poor. She might have been poor down here. But praise God, she's not poor now. Now listen. The sleeping in Jesus are with Jesus, sleeping in Jesus, resting. Jesus is in heaven. He's at the right hand of the Father. And when God sends Jesus to get the bodies, to redeem the body. He came the first time to redeem the soul. He's coming the second time to redeem the body. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. That's when he comes. He's going to bring the spirits, the life, the soul of the righteous with him. Now, I read it from uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep, In Jesus will God bring with him, Jesus. Now then, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So Jesus is coming from heaven. He's going to bring the sleeping in Jesus with him. He's going to shout as he did when he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the bodies will come out of the graves, all of them. Doesn't make any difference if they've gone back to dust. God can take care of that. And then the spirit will unite with a glorified body. The living saints will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and we'll all be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Amen. Father, save the soul that's nearest hell today. Help the men and the women, the the boys and the girls who are not prepared to meet God. Help them to get ready right now, and we'll give God all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen.